Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sheen and welcome. Today, I will be answering one of my most frequently asked questions, which is whether I prefer Oxford University or Cambridge University. As two of the UK's most famous and oldest universities, Oxford and Cambridge have a rivalry that dates back more than 800 years. And you know, both Oxford and Cambridge have a lot of things in common, but they also have some differences, which I will explain today. So let's get into it. Starting with the similarities. Firstly, the main similarity they both have is me. I am an alumna to both universities. So I did my undergraduate degrees at Oxford University. I studied material science for four years, and then I moved to Cambridge where I did a PhD in spinal research for four more years. Gosh, I've spent a lot of time at uni. It's been a total of eight years and I am now officially an alumni of both um, universities. Alumni, alumna, one of those. Number two, in terms of world rankings, Oxford and Cambridge are very much neck to neck. Very recently, the Times crowned Oxford as the first in the world, whereas Cambridge was second overall and in terms of research. Cambridge was also placed as the third best university in the world for its teaching, while Oxford came fifth. Similarly, the QS World Rankings put Oxford as fifth and Cambridge as sixth in terms of world rankings. It is important to remember that on the global level, the differences between Oxford and Cambridge rankings are very marginal. One thing that is consistent throughout is that both of them seem to have a very permanent spot in the top 10 universities in the world and they have a the whole prestige and the whole fame that is associated with them and they are very solidly placed as one of the most elite academic foundations. Thirdly, the college system. So this is probably one of the most key elements of Oxbridge universities is the college system. So what is an Oxbridge college? It is basically the equivalent of belonging to a house in Harry Potter. You know how you have Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff and Raven Slytherin. Oh, that took a minute. Um, so because they have all of these different houses where you belong to one of them and that's kind of your immediate circle of friends and they take care of everything that has to do with you in terms of admin and general welfare. So in, in the Oxbridge context, it's very similar. So your first interaction with your college will be during interviews. When you apply, the other ones who will carry out the interviews and who will house you when you come to Oxford or Cambridge, etc. during the interview process. And then once you get in, you will be associated to that college. And the college is kind of a small, close-knit community. They will have accommodation for you. Um, they will take care of your finances, of your health, of your post. Uh, they, they kind of are like an extension of your house and they take care of all of this for you and at the same time they also offer academic support so what i mean by that is which we will get into very soon about the tutorial system you will have an in-house supervisor who will help you who will walk you through all of your um, study materials and all of the worksheets that you've been doing at lectures so the way it works is for example me who did material science and I started in 2011. So everybody who's starting in 2011 doing material science will be in different colleges across um, Oxford. And so in my college, there were only three of us who started in the same year who will be doing the same course. But then we were part of a cohort of maybe 60 people who started in my college, Corpus Christi, at the same time. But they're all doing different subjects. So then the 60 of us are all the little freshers who come and we live together. And you know, you have dinner in the hall. So again, college will provide food, they have libraries, they have bars, they have cafes. And all of these are usually open 24 seven. So then you start hanging out with all of these people who started together with you, but doing different subjects. And also people who are older than you who are in the college. And then when it comes to lectures, you will go to the Department of Material Science to have your lectures with all the other material scientists from all the different colleges. And that's how you meet now your course friends. And then you come back home or your college for everything else. So this is a really nice little community and it's easier when you go in. It's kind of like a pre-made social environment for you to easily fit in. And also you get the tailored teaching, which we will get into in a minute. In Cambridge, there are about 30 colleges and in Oxford, there are about 40 of them. And they all range in sizes and in what courses they offer. And 
the location in terms of whether they're close to the city centre or not. Um, there are very minute differences between each of them, but college life in general is pretty much the same across the board. There is also some college like rivalry, especially when it comes to sports like rowing. Um, there are all of these um, tournaments and competition that happen throughout the year where the different colleges will compete with each other. And that again brings out a lot of sense of belongingness to your college and everyone is out there cheering for their own colleges. It's really nice. Now onto the tutorials and supervisions. So this small group of teaching that is offered primarily at Oxbridge universities is very unique and very helpful. It is called Tutorials in Oxford and Supervision in Cambridge but it is exactly the same thing where as an undergraduate when you go to lectures you get given homework whether it's an essay whether it's a it's a worksheet and then you work through it and you have to submit it to your tutor um, who will be someone from your college as we discussed previously and they will mark it and then you have a short one hour session with them and it can be them you and another student so it's usually two to one or one to one or three to one but not more than that so it's a very small group of teaching that happens usually in the office of the um, supervisor in college and you just rock up they've already marked your work and it's a discussion um, they will it, it really deepens your understanding of the topic and because they've marked your work they know where you're lacking an understanding of the topic or where you're really struggling and then it's very much a conversation and you get to learn a lot more from someone who is very very excellent at the, the field that you are trying to work on which is great so this is a lot of contact time and also you get very personalized help towards your your individual performance and your development of the work and this is great because you know this is something that makes a huge difference as compared to just attending a lecture with 200 people in it um, so that's really good but obviously it also means that you then have a lot more work to do because for example thinking in my second year of undergrad I had about nine worksheets to submit per week for different tutorials so that can be quite a lot of work to do and because you have to submit you're accountable because someone is waiting to mark that for you and you can't just say that you forgot or you know yeah just rock up and pretend that is there so you have to do the work so obviously this this then means that you have a lot more work to do and that's why term time is a little bit more intense for Oxbridge students number five while most universities have their own sets of traditions, Oxford and Cambridge are known to have been holding on to some historic and maybe to the outside world a bit bizarre set of traditions. For example, the first thing is the formal dinners that we have. Um, you can book it every week sometimes. It depends on your college. Most colleges do it on a weekly basis. You need to dress up, but you also need to wear a gown, which is a black robe again very Harry Potter vibe um, you have to wear this for special occasions in Cambridge and Oxford but Oxford has the added thing of the sub fusk which is our uniform <laughs> basically when you start you need to buy this a white shirt um, and for boys it's black suit and then for girls you can wear a black skirt and you have a black ribbon and the gown as well and now they've made it a bit less gender centric so you can wear either of the things that you want um, but yeah so this is the sub fusk that we wear on the first day when we start uni with there's a ceremony called the matriculation you have to wear it for that you have to wear it for exams and you have to wear it for any kind of um, viva or presentations that you're doing that are part of assessments and on exams you also wear a little flower called carnation on the first day of your exam you wear it white, on the final day you wear it red, and in between you wear it pink. The rumour is that this is meant to represent how much blood you're losing during exam term, but I don't know if that's true, but these are the colours that um, we wear in terms of flowers. So yeah, Cambridge has now banished the uniform for a while now, they don't have a uniform or the sub fast care, but they still have the gown for matriculation and for special occasions. Um, and also there are Latin is still very present in both Oxford and Cambridge um, sometimes at dinners there is something that will be read in Latin before you start eating a lot of the wordings are in Latin around again these are just all traditions that still exist nowadays now in terms of location the city of Oxford lies about 60 miles northwest of London which takes about an hour on the train um, 
Whereas Cambridge is, again, about 60 miles, but north of London. Again, there's a direct train, which is about 50 minutes from London to Cambridge. So they're both very much close to London, making it very easy to go out and about to central London. Although weirdly, Oxford and Cambridge are not that easily um, connected because you have to go through London. If you're taking the train, there's no direct train tracks from Oxford to Cambridge. So you have to take a train to London, take the tube to change station, and then take another train to Oxford, unless you take a bus or something, but that takes forever, like four hours. Uh, but driving is not too bad. That's about two and a half hours between Oxford and Cambridge. For some reason, it's not well connected probably the rivalry to be honest and in terms of the cities themselves what they have in common is they both have this really pretty old architecture which is beautiful to look at and they both have a main river that flows through the center of town um, in Oxford it's the River Chirwell and in Cambridge it's the River Cam and finally one thing that I think defines both Oxford and Cambridge is what we do in our pastime, which is punting. Uh, punting is um, basically using a rod to push this very shallow boat around, um, which is good for shallow water as well. And, and it's very, very common in both Oxford and Cambridge, very popular with tourists and students similarly. And as part of the university, when you're students, you can get boats for, for free or for very cheap, depending on where your college is. If your college is on the river, then they will have boats that are very easily accessible. If not, you have to go through a boathouse, but again, um, it's very accessible. And yeah, I, I, it's, it's just really, really nice. And during summer, you can just either go punting or you can just sit by the river and watch. I personally cannot punt for the life of me. I think I'm just too scared to stand on the moving boat and I've seen many people fall into the river. It is not something I would want to happen to me. So I am usually either sitting on a boat or sitting by the river. Now we've established what the similarities are. There are loads of them. Now moving on to the differences. The first difference I experienced having lived in both cities is definitely the vibe. Um, Oxford has this vibe of being livelier and bigger and more happening. And I think there is definitely more happening in Oxford than in Cambridge because um, now that they have the new fancy Westgate shopping mall, there is so much happening, so much hustle bustle, and they have so many restaurants, they have a rooftop, and it's just great. Um, but Cambridge gives the vibe of being a little bit more um, smaller and quieter and just cutesy, it, almost like a village. It is not a village in any way. Um, but for example, in, in Oxford, we used to be able to go to ice cream shops and stuff until midnight. But in Cambridge, after 10, 11, nothing is open other than bars and clubs. So it's really hard to feel like it's still happening other than nightlife. Um, but, you know, I think these are very small differences. And this is something that um, I still remember the the person who was helping on interviews on my day, first day in Oxford when I was being interviewed, um, they, they made this comment about how Oxford feels like a city that has a university in it, whereas Cambridge feels like a university campus that is almost like a city because the university kind of is spread out all across um, the place. So yeah, it does feel like in Oxford, you're in a city that also have a university, whereas here you just feel like you're constantly on campus and there's kind of some city life happening in the camp on the campus, if that makes sense. Secondly, the origin. I think this is quite interesting. Oxford University is actually 925 years old. That is really, really old. It was founded in 1096. Following a conflict between the Oxford scholars and the townspeople, a little group of the Oxford scholars decided that they didn't want to be in Oxford anymore and they're going to make their own place. So they left Oxford, moved to Cambridge, and they are the ones who started Cambridge University back in 1209 and yeah so since then Cambridge has existed and that is probably why the rivalry also exists because it was the fact that some people left Oxford out of spite and it, they just hated the whole place and went and recreated the same thing somewhere else which is why then rivalry happens. Now when it comes to the courses offered 
um, obviously the basic courses are offered in both places but then there are some courses that are specific to Oxford or specific to Cambridge and are not offered in both places and some courses which can be offered in both places can be taught in very different ways and therefore if you are choosing between Oxford and Cambridge, you need to make a lot of research in terms of the subject that you're interested in to make sure that firstly it is offered at the university and secondly that the modules and the way they approach the subject is the one that you resonate with the most. For example, I knew that I wanted to do a mix of um, physics, chemistry and engineering and maths. So that led me to material science. And in Oxford, I can start it immediately as material science, whereas in Cambridge, material science on its own doesn't exist as an undergrad degree you have to do natural sciences and you have to try out I think three different sciences and then pick later on during the year and obviously some people like this because it gives you more choice and you don't have to decide immediately what you want to be doing but I knew what I wanted to do which is why starting off as material science was the better option for me Similarly, Cambridge offers vet, vet medicine, but Oxford doesn't offer a vet medicine. And also Cambridge offers architecture, but um, Oxford doesn't. Oxford offers fine arts, but Cambridge doesn't. So there's, there's a lot of things that are not offered. And as I said, some of the things that are offered can be administered differently. I know, for example, I think it's English literature where just the approach is different and the time of the literature that they look at in terms of the medieval times or not is very different. Um, so depending on your interest, then that would make a difference on which course you'd rather do. So definitely do some research on your course. And finally, I think this personally is of interest to me, which is the admissions of women into Oxford and Cambridge. Again, the history of Oxford and Cambridge differs when it comes to the admission of women. For both universities, men were the only ones who could enrol and be part of the university for a very, very long time in their histories. Um, but Cambridge was the first one to allow women to enroll, but they could not become full members of the university until 1940s, which is very recent. But then Oxford, on the other hand, they enrolled, welcomed and allowed women to be full term members in the 1920s. So it is a bit of a Cambridge opened their doors to women, but would not let them be full members until later and Oxford was a bit later to welcome them but allowed them to be full members before Cambridge so it's not very um, obviously it's not a competition but it's just very interesting to see all of this for example the college I'm in in Cambridge is Hughes Hall and this was founded initially as a women only college who um, especially women who wanted to do PGC to teach and it was founded by a woman and it was only for women and at the moment we, we are now at a co-ed college but there are still a few colleges in Cambridge that are uh, female only I believe in Oxford as well um, which is great because we've seen the move from men only to some men and women and now we also have women only and mixed so it's great um, I guess this is progress so overall you can see that there are more similarities than there are differences. The differences are very small and don't really impact what your experience would be like. Personally, if I have to answer the question that I started with, which one do I prefer, Oxford or Cambridge? It is a hard question to answer and I know it is a frustrating answer that I will give you, but for me, I like both for different reasons. But Oxford still holds a very, very special place for me. And that's because it was my first time away from home, first time in the UK, first time at university, you know, just coming out of school, starting adulthood. It was a completely different time in my life and it was incredible. I had the best times. I have such fond memories of Oxford. I made lifelong friends and I learned so much about myself. I grew up into being who I am now and all of this happened while I was in Oxford. So obviously because of that, this makes Oxford a very special time in my life and not to say that Cambridge wasn't. After I left Cam Oxford and came to Cambridge, it was a very different life because 
PhD life is so different to undergraduate where um, you don't have homework, you don't have lectures, it's entirely self-managed. It's like having a job, a nine to five, and once you're done, you don't have homework anymore. So that gave me time to explore a lot of things that I wanted to do, to learn new skills, to meet so many people, uh, which has led me to now being on YouTube talking to you about my experiences. So it's been another kind of special, and because we all grew up and by the time I started my PhD, my friends that I have are now older as well. I got to be part of important life events like friends getting married, friends buying their first house, um, getting the new job and it's all been different in a very different way. <laughs> it's, again, I know it's a frustrating answer but um, no, it's been wonderful. Both places have their uniqueness and I think what makes them special is your special uh, your special preferences and you know because I don't think anyone has an objective answer as to whether Oxford or Cambridge is better it has to do with what you want to gain from the university first of all in terms of your degree and your courses and secondly what what are you more inclined to you know and wherever you go it will become special because of the experience that you make out of it rather than the places themselves but at the end of the day they're both incredible places filled with so many great people and I am very grateful that I've had the experience and the opportunity to actually go to both places and see what it's like and it's been eight wonderful years and I'm so happy that now I get to share this with you I am kind of sad that while I was there I didn't have um, you know the the foresight of actually um, recording my journey in order to be able to share it but I will try my best to share whatever I still remember with you in terms of Oxford and Cambridge if you have any questions if you have any specific videos that you would like me to do um, regarding my experience of Oxford and Cambridge other than application which I will eventually get to um, let me know and I will be happy to oblige but Thank you. I hope this video was useful. Thank you for being here as usual and I hope I see you soon. Bye.